I've seen the link into it in a lot, so. Yeah, but have you found the YouTube page, the city page? The live I'm, I'm typing it in there. Okay. Sure. Okay, I got it. All right, and okay. then did you find us? Yes, there are two. There are two screens here. Yes, sir. You'll just go to the city and then you'll click on videos. And once we go live, you'll be able to see us. Okay, you'll want to you'll want to mute your computer. <laughs> Bill. Yes, sir. You yeah. need to turn the volume down on your computer. Yeah. Good evening. Welcome to the Dallas Santa Rosa Utility System Board meeting. It is uh, Monday, October 26th. We are in the council chambers and this is being recorded. Leslie, would you call them? Yes, sir. Audit Verhoska? Here. Robert Davies? Here. Tom Nell? Here. Terry Mills? Here. Mark Meister? Here. Bill Stanford? Here. Steve Flint? And we have four. <clears throat> if you would um, rise for the invocation and pledge. Bless those present, O oh Lord, that the business conducted here this evening will be for the continued betterment of our city. And in keeping with thy commandments, we ask in God's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Approval um, special meeting minutes from August 24th. We had a chance to look at those. Are there any changes? Any uh, additions, additions, changes? Otherwise, can I have a motion? Move to accept it as submitted. Second. Okay. Motion laid, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are accepted as presented. Reports. And again, I'll make my little pre-game speech that uh, I'm assuming we spent the weekend pouring over these reports. Uh, notice whatever is not usual and uh, have those ready to speak up. Thomas Lambert is attending by phone, Mr. Chairman. Um, but we can answer any question you have. Just some of the highlights the sale of the golf course, um, the St. Louis County Schools is slated to be done this month. And um, a couple other benchmarks the uh, Gulf Oslo station is completed, and the Bengal Road lift station is completed. Um, the treatment plan expansion, we are moving forward with uh, finalizing design with that. We've gotten, I guess you could say approval for some grant money to be, um, hopefully be authorized to us to help us um, fund that project. And that was kind of a something that was a, the funding part was keeping us from moving forward with that. But now uh, there's some funding available that should be getting approved for and so we're going to be back on track with that hopefully going out to bid um, after january and breaking ground before the end of the fiscal year so that's um 
Comments, questions? Not. We'll move on to the financial report. So we are uh, highlighting just the, the full 12 months here. There are still some balancing of those numbers as, as there's still outstanding invoices and revenues coming in. Uh, but just some highlights for the year. Um, TAP fees revenues are up over 2.6 million for the year. It's been a very busy year for residential construction and, and we're seeing that uh, reserve balance increase uh, because of that. So we were in April, we we're at 1.7 million. Uh, we're at 2.6 uh, for the year. And that far exceeded what we budgeted, uh, but it's due to all the new uh, residential construction. Um, some of the other items, um, We've had pretty much every month the, the little over budget on temporary employees just due to um, when we're in between filling permanent positions, we'll use temporary staff. Um, and right now at this time, we're actually, um, as far as our water and sewer department, we're fully staffed, which is usually hard to do. But um, uh, water chemicals were higher than normal just because of the lead and copper standards, trying to meet those. Uh, standards in the water system. Uh, we have to use more uh, potassium uh, uh, phosphate and aquamag to, to keep up with that. Um, also, just to talk a little bit about the impacts of Hurricane Sally on operations. <clears throat> Again, we're still tracking those costs as they come in, but there's obviously some costs associated with that. And uh, just for emergency repairs and maintenance and for preparation and for um, emergency staffing costs and over time. <clears throat> and um, so we're, we're bringing all those costs in and, and uh, working on a the FEMA tracking sheet so that we could apply for FEMA assistance, both to recoup those costs and for mitigation of some issues. Um, for example, lift stations that were down on the coastal areas like in Madura places like that that got flooded. Uh, you know, we're hoping to get some assistance there to uh, mitigate that, either to raise those stations up or to put barriers around them or perhaps to move them um, so that they don't get flooded in the future. So we're working on that right now. And we have to answer any questions you have. I'll, uh, I'd like to add a few things if I could, Mr. Chairman, um, to the tail end of Jason's report, uh, the utility uh, billing supervisor has provided a report of the uh, amount of past due fees and reconnection fees uh, over the prior 12 months due to COVID. Uh, we always have had a payment deferral process uh, where if you need to establish payment plans, then you can fill out the appropriate you know, paperwork. That's a policy of the city. But with COVID, uh, we polished up an economic hardship form and made that available uh, to our customers. And uh, just the the waiver of the um, the, the uh, fees uh, is just under one hundred thirty five thousand. And so that doesn't include the uh, amount of the bill itself because the. Uh, City Council at their last meeting approved a charitable donation uh, from a Bigham uh, contractor, which is a local company who provided a charitable contribution to entirely pay off the um, the water bill, a uh, water and sewer. So that was absolutely fantastic. The uh, the fees will end up being a debt that will come in front of the council. I would imagine at some point for them to waive that hasn't yet been discussed, but typically that is what we would do given the nature of, you know, COVID. Um, so we anticipate part of our year-end process would be bringing that back to the mayor and council 
um, to take final action on that. So very good news for our customers. Also want to make sure just that, that you know uh, how even when it's just our, our penalties and fines, um, that that does affect our bottom line because we're still, of course, having to provide the staff assistance to go out and provide those uh, those reconnections. Um, in addition to that, of course, you had a, uh, a rate uh, workshop uh, a number of months ago, and this has been a very busy storm season for us. And so we had hoped to be further along, you know, than we were, but wanted to let you know that the city attorney has been working on updates to the impact fee ordinance um, based on the recommendations of your uh, rate consultants. If you'll recall, they recommended taking, separating out the uh, tap fee from the impact fee, but those are two different fees. One is to tap our system and the other, the impact fee has to show a reasonable nexus to the cost of providing future capacity. And so they made uh, that recommendation that for transparency, those be uh, separated and just know that our, our city attorney is working on that. Also, you uh, asked for the city's uh, contracted real estate broker to bring back to you recommendations for how um, our broker could market uh, potential surplus lands at some of your ERS sites. And the reason why you asked for that is because the potential sales of any land would drive down the cost on the estimated $7 million worth of deferred capital projects, uh, which the SSRU has workshopped. And so uh, unfortunately that has also been delayed. So I wanna let you know that she has made headway, but we did, we did not have anything to present to you this evening. So we anticipate your next meeting, uh, you will have that in front of you and be able to make a recommendation to the council uh, at what you would you know, prioritize. So just wanted to uh, remind you of that. Um, Jason already mentioned the 6 million in restore funds for the expansion of the Tiger Point treatment plant that is uh, moving forward uh, very well. And uh, also, as you know, we adopted a budget for this year that does not represent a 12 month spending plan um, because we had a, a gap. And so for that reason, it's a very austere budget. It really doesn't include any new capital projects except what that which your uh, tax fees and pay for. And uh, that's because we workshopped the idea of consolidating both the uh, city and non-city utility customers together, lowering the rate to your uh, non-city customers, and then adopting the surcharge allowed um, by law and keeping that inside the fund so that you uh, have the revenue needed to again drive down uh, the seven million in capital needs. And so just know we're continuing to work on that. Uh, we definitely want to have something to you uh, in December for you to take action on there. So that's all that I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you to make that first. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How much money are we looking at at impact uh, by the hurricane that may be going to FEMA? All told, I mean, entire, I know it's not told now. Yeah, right. I, unfortunately, um, I don't have it broken down just by SSRU, but uh, all of our facilities together, actually, ironically, it's the same amount as I, I just mentioned for your capital deferral at seven million. Again, that includes everything. So uh, I would need to check our records to see, like, for the lift stations themselves. But some really interesting conversations. Uh, came out of the independent damage assessment report uh, that the city undertook in the first 30 days of our lift stations. And um, part of that recommendation is to uh, investigate whether it makes sense to move forward with, and I'm kind of going off on a, I'm digressing a bit, but just for you to um, keep this in mind as we're talking about the cost of repairs, um, we're going to be talking about whether it makes sense to move forward with upgrading your existing lift stations for SCADA and replacing those electronic components, or because of the age of a lot of your lift station, does it make more sense to go towards master lift stations uh, in some places so that over time the maintenance uh, 
you, you can see a savings there. And what we've been told is you, you could potentially uh, reduce the number of lift stations you have anywhere from 10 to 30 percent. So uh, just bear that in mind as we're looking at the, uh, the cost of repairs. It may be a silver lining that we had not already moved forward with SCADA because you would pay to have done that and then come back and realize that we really are uh, missed an opportunity to save on future maintenance if we just have fewer lift stations. So we're looking at all of that as part of our um, post Hurricane Sally, you know, damage assessment and recommendations back to our boards, and uh, you'll be workshopping that as well. Um, we're going to talk about Tiger Point in a little bit, but Tiger Point, the bunkers uh, had a million dollars, just under a million dollars worth of damage done. Uh, the you, you may recall the West Course um, was it Hurricane Ivan. Um, uh, that was a 2014. Oh, it was a 14 flood. Yeah. Thank you. I knew that we received FEMA money. I just didn't know for what which disaster, but uh, about the same amount of, of damage then. And so we'll be seeking uh, FEMA reimbursement for those bunkers, but they were significantly uh, damaged. And then also there was a flood and wind damage to the uh, clubhouse, uh, to the um, pro shop, to the um, the downstairs like catering and dining area and also to the roof of the mechanics building. Uh, the facility damage uh, thankfully is covered by insurance. Uh, so as you know, the city is looking at another $350,000 subsidy just to keep Tiger Point operations afloat this year. And two years ago, the city council had stopped that and said they were not going to use taxpayer dollars to subsidize golf play any longer, which is why your budget looks as austere as it does. And that is why the golf course is for sale. And so the damage from Hurricane uh, Sally really is unfortunate timing. And we're, uh, we're talking with FEMA now to see what we can, what we can get reimbursed. So. And then isn't the caveat with the FEMA on the bunkers is that we would have to then insure them after that? That, that is one of the, the caveats. It's high the, insurance for that. Yes, that's one of the caveats. So, just our share uh, is 25%. 25%, which is enough to crack. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> that being said, we had a great month in October at Tiger Point. <laughs> so, all that being said, people are playing golf. They hope for that. No. Was, uh, was, there was a tournament out there this past Friday, and I heard, heard nothing but good things about the course. They really cleaned it up very quickly and very, very well. And uh, it looked like they were going really hard at it in the, in the pro shop and the clubhouse, so bringing that back up. And they were still pretty well able to operate without some of those uh, meetings. Overall, the the uh, past past months, everything is is run uh, smoothly. Um, just to highlight, the the big thing was through Hurricane Sally. Um, that was obviously a big challenge for staff and for the treatment plant. Um, the staff were able to uh, run the plant and keep everything within compliance on the permit permitted effluent quality. Uh, we did have, because of the rain and the uh, infiltration and inflow into the collection system, we had it was, the plant was like drinking a, like drinking out of a fire hose. It was getting so much water, so um, the storage pond got exceedingly high uh, from all the flow coming in, and because the the reuse booster station uh, intake screen clogging with algae, uh, we did have to do an emergency bypass from the treated effluent. We had to pull extra water out of the pond and put it in another pond on the west course. Uh, we did this through a provision in our permit with DEP. We, you know, we've got authorization from them to do that. It's something we had to do in the uh, the uh, <clears throat> rains in 2014. Had to do a similar thing. But uh, fortunately, you know, staff they were here during that time back in 14, so they kind of knew what to do this time, and it worked smoothly. And um, 
the treatment plant is pretty much back to normal. It took about two weeks to get all that extra flow through the system, and uh, it's operating well now. Um, the water plants did well. Um, the only thing we had to do during Sally is uh, we had several leaks inside the city um, that staff could not find quickly because of the storm, so we had to shut off um, customers on the city water system for a couple of days south of 98 to preserve pressure and flow for the hospital and assisted living facilities until we could get all the leaks identified and fixed. On the sewer collection systems, um, there were several stations that flood with events like this that were inundated with flood water with storm surge. We had stations that lost power. Um, staff had to jockey portable pumps and generators to keep the system going. And overall, we did not have any significant sanitary sewer overflows during the event. We did have some issues where um, the system was so backed up that people were not able to flush or there were some backups in homes. But it was um, so much uh, pressure on the system due to I&I &I and, and storm surge that it was uh, pretty much overwhelmed. But overall, staff did a good job of controlling uh, <clears throat> the, the emergency and maintaining uh, the system. And uh, we, we learned a lot about some of our uh, generators that are, are at station. Some of them worked fine and some of them didn't. And the ones that we found were, were not operating uh, properly, we've gone back and repaired and, and made those operational. We've gotten five, five of those stations back working now. Um, and we're now preparing for this next possible storm. Just so you know, we're looking at it as a Sally event. We're not, we're not taking any second guesses. We're going to, we've got everything being deployed right now and we're planning just as if it was something like that or, or more. Um, and so staff have been out deploying pumps and generators and testing them. And we're going to continue to do that tomorrow, make sure everything's operational and see what the track is tomorrow and go from there. But just so you know, we're, we're planning as if it's a, an event like Sally. So we'll have everything um, ready for that, for an event like that. Um, Samantha covered the East Course. And that's pretty much it on the operations report. Unless y'all have any questions. <clears throat> Backing up a little, how, how are we standing on the Barrett Drive and uh, Plantation Hill project as far as uh, completion, and percentage completion, and so forth. I know we were close before. Yeah. Uh, we we're at about, Thomas, correct me if I'm wrong, on Plantation Hill is about 75%. Thomas? Yeah. 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 Yes. What percentage of completion are we at Plantation Hills? I said 75%. And is that uh, the end of the thing? They have to be done with the pipe in the net. Okay. About 90%. So um, I know they're starting on Shirley McClure now. And then Bear Drive, Thomas, is closer to about 50%. Now I'm going to make a guess. Uh, uh, that we have to decide the 50%, but it has um, constructed it to the high value of the thing. Yeah. Okay. I, know, I know at least Plantation Hill looks a lot closer. Still have all the lawn ornaments and so forth over there. But, uh, they're dwindling. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I would like to just echo uh, Jason's comments about uh, the water and sewer um, operators and our technicians. We used a new tool uh, with this storm. It's um, our Teams app so that as we were receiving calls or we were identifying issues, it went into uh, a software system so that all employees could see it at the same time. Our police and fire primarily stay toward, you know, to their radios, um, but, but police and fire leadership was watching teams. And so we were able to watch for 72 hours 
throughout the night the number of calls and issues primarily to over 11,000 customers in the South Santa Rosa utility area. This is to our non-city customers. And when it was over and you were able to actually, you know, um, through your debriefs, uh, identify the number of lift stations which went down because of power surges or because of the storm surge, it actually uh, was well over 1,300 customers who <coughs> could have been impacted by sewer backflow. And we actually, um, we did not have calls, but we think that there was around 200 homes that might have experienced some type of, you know, a, a sewer inundation. It might have just been a little rise in the, you know, toilet or otherwise. But when you look at the number of customers who could have been impacted because those lift stations went down, and then our utility operators who were out there uh, throughout the night, uh, you have mixed feelings. Number one, it was just, it was absolutely awesome. And it really fostered a much deeper understanding and appreciation from our first responders and the rest of our staff for what it is that public works does during natural disasters when you're so low to the water table. Um, but secondly, as I, I said, we you know immediately got on a uh, independent damage assessment report. Um, Jason did not delay on that at all to make sure that when the next storm came and we were now on our second, we had Delta and now we've got uh, Zeta, but that those generate or those uh, generators were repaired and that hopefully the lift stations are either repaired or there's a bypass. And so uh, this morning, that's what we talked about in our pre-storm brief, um, uh, briefing is making sure that those lift stations are not going to fail uh, during the storm and that we've done that vulnerability assessment. So I just wanna echo that you're in very good hands we talked with the largest utilities uh, in our area as part of our after action report. And we asked them about what they did to pre-deploy. They did not pump down any pumps prior to the storm as South Santa Rosa utility did. During the storm from tropical force winds to hurricane force winds, they did not deploy any personnel. After the storm, uh, Holly Navarre utilized a back truck focusing on their uh, wet well storage, um, but the response was much different. And so I do credit that for the lack of, of, um, of impact that your customers saw. And I'm just, again, really proud of Jason and his staff. You could really see the uh, experience all come to the table during that storm. I don't know if anybody's had a chance to read the after action uh, report. Uh, it's, it's well well written and a lot of really good information in there. And I think uh, you look through there and see that uh, our, our staff's done a really great job and we're well prepared uh, for this. So. Thank you. Good job. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else on the water sewer? Comments. Um, action items. Approval of reimbursement and agreement request from Dr. Howard Little Southside Drive. Um, this resident, he uh, is requesting a uh, reimbursement agreement. What he would like to do is extend the force main that was put in on Soundside Drive. He wants it extended to his house about 500 feet. He's gonna pay for that, uh, but he wants an agreement where with other people tie in that it gets reimbursed for that. And this would involve a uh, agreement that our city attorney would put together and that would come before city council for approval. And it's, uh, it's similar to other agreements that we've done, um, step agreements. Question. This would also um, provide an opportunity for the apartments that are down that way that we've had a lot of trouble with. Uh, they've had a lot of trouble with their septic tanks. It would be a good opportunity for them to hook up the sewer. Can I? Yes, sir. Uh, May I address? Uh, Howell Little, 3834 Bangkok Cove, Gulf Breeze. Uh, that's, that's my house, uh, a labor of love. Obviously we built in a house during a pandemic, uh, 2020. It's been an amazing hurricane. 
Uh, we've been here two years. My son and his family have been here 10 years, and we can't think of a better place to be. We were lucky to, to get the lie out there on the sound. Um, and we're ready. I, I contract, Thomas was very, very helpful in helping me kind of make some decisions along the way. So thank you. Basically, thank you to the city and to the board and, and whatnot. Uh, I was getting pretty frustrated because we were running out of time. We had a tight time window that I wish I had placed some, some bets and how you'll never get it done. Uh, but uh, Thomas, thank you for helping us get it done. Uh, Jeremy Norris was very nice. I mean, I, I, everybody I talked to was was extraordinarily helpful. So, uh, and we looked at it as the, the the right thing to do for us, knowing that uh, the issues of the sound and the septics, and we get the bonus with the condo complex. But um, I looked at an agreement. Uh, Thomas sent me some information. I mean, I had help from from developers and builders, so I'd done my homework. My wife and I have been accused of doing too much homework, but by golly, we. We've learned uh, sometimes the hard way. So uh, all that help is kind of distill itself into kind of where we are. Uh, and, and I'm ready. I've got the contractor ready. We're closing in on the last probably 60, 90 days in our, of our house. So um, uh, we're using Bill Lee right here in Gulf Breeze, Utility Services, another great guy that's been extraordinarily helpful. So I've had fun in kind of this warped sort of way working through all this, I really have. I learned a lot, uh, and with that uh, little piece of property and the little uh, three-two three house on the sound, it's kind of why I'm here tonight, just to meet everybody, say hello, and hopefully a big thank you at the end. Okay. Any questions, comments? Any of our folks online? Yes. Do I hear a motion? I'll move right to the we approve that. Second. Motion made, seconded. Uh, comments uh, from uh, any of the board? We've had our public forum. So, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. You must come back. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. I will, yeah. Bring liquor. Bring liquor. Yes, yes. <laughs> Boy, you have this is a fun place to live. <laughs> it is great. Any, uh, thank anything you. else under the action items or any uh, discussion? Uh, maybe one point down on the, uh, the borrow pits uh, situation. I don't think we could report there. The borrow pits. For the uh, wells up the uh, land development code. Uh, uh, anything that's going on right now with that FRUS? No. <laughs> uh, Matt, I'd like to call uh, the county administrator, Dan Shepler, and get an update. So we did send um, our uh, assistant city manager, Sheila Fitzgerald. Um, Sh Sheila joined us uh, just a few months ago, and she pro previously worked as the grants and projects director for San Rosa County since 2012. Um, and so the Fairpoint Regional Utility System each had a representative who attended a meeting um, where the zoning board was considering an amendment to the comprehensive plan, which would have allowed for a borrow pit uh, against the recommendation of DEP and against the recommendation of the county's own independent environmental report. Um, and so there were members of the public who spoke against that. Um, and uh, of course, Sheila and other representatives of FRUS also spoke against it because um, there are contaminants that very possibly uh, could affect our drinking water supply for the entire south end of the county. Ultimately, the zoning board uh, tabled it until new uh, commissioners take office. 
And that action um, had mixed feelings on whether that helped or hurt uh, our concerns. So I don't have an update to you right now, but I would like to kind of take the temperature of the commissioners and um, and bring something back to you on that matter. Watch step for this, not dead yet. Yeah. It's a very dangerous situation I'm aware of it. Similar things happened in Scandia County and ended up contaminating. I don't know how many more sites are there. And once it's contaminated, I mean, that's it. You're stuck that's with it. THC, if, if you're lucky. It's so bad, you can't use that. You're really out of luck. Yeah. It's quite shocking how far this has gotten. Yeah. And also that there is, right or wrong, there is a feeling that continuing it to the new, um, you know, County commissioners, once they take office, could be um, disadvantageous to our position. So that is that's the concern. Yeah. Yes. So we'll continue to stay on top of it. But um, but darn, I wish I had an update for you tonight. You really caught me on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was. I, know. I think that was enough. Brings us, I think, up to speed on where, where it was or where it is. And, uh, you know, I think that's just kind of a crapshoot when you decide whether to go with the old commission and you. Mm -hmm. uh, just take the chance. Uh, it did get quite a, quite a ways down the road before anybody got the most. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I don't care. Break your leg, dog. 